You are watching Gemini Brain. The only place on the internet where you are allowed to change your mind. TikTok is a strange place populated with all sorts of weird and exciting communities fighting for your attention on your For You page. We have the reality shifters convinced they can have a piece of Draco Malfoy behind Harry's back, anti-capitalists securing me in my refusal to get a corporate job, astrologers who are for some reason always bisexual, 23-year-olds prematurely approaching their quarter-life crisis, and um, by the way the algorithm thinks I'm 23 apparently, people sharing their horror stories about straight white men, the infamous Gen Z versus Millennials war, 70s hair tutorials, discussions on why mushrooms will be the next succulent, teens having wholesome meltdowns over urban wildlife, conspiracies about the royal family, roller skating to Fleetwood Mac oldies, and most recently, music buffs exposing new supposed industry plans. So basically everything I have either liked or saved a favorite, so there's that. Uh, I exposed myself to you. And among all this whimsical madness of TikTok, I can say with confidence that I have found a true diamond in the rough. A story that puts a genuine smile on my face. A few days ago, I had stumbled upon this TikTok that made me stop in my tracks. What is this? Who are these two dreamy men stealing glances at each other? Why am I feeling this way? If you, like me, are a jaded young millennial, let me introduce you to one of the million reasons why the 2021 teen culture is giving me hope for the future. The Rob Jetten and Jesu Klava ship. I'm so sorry guys, my linguistics degree has me obliged to always apply a proper pronunciation and I sometimes sound like an asshole. Yes, you have guessed correctly, these two gentlemen are indeed Dutch politicians. Please don't close this video yet, please give this story a chance, I assure you, you won't be disappointed. So this guy, who looks as if he had snuck into politics by pulling a reverse Miss Congeniality, is Rob Jutten, a 34-year-old former parliamentary leader of a Dutch faction Democrat 66. More like Democrat 66 jawline, am I right? <gasps> oh my god. So he was elected as the youngest ever parliamentary leader back in 2018, when he was merely 31 years old. And it seems like this decision was met with some controversy in the Dutch media. Jetten was criticized for being too young for such a high position, his baby face too dreamy, his fits way too fire, and his hair a tad too slick. To many, he came across as a goody two-shoes, the archetype of an insufferable boy at the top of your class that never fails to remind the teacher about yesterday's homework. So, for example, this dude named Hans Fels, a Dutch documentary filmmaker, had this to say about our Robbie. He looks like a boy who bought a pair of nice glasses and put on a suit. His hair appears as if a gust of wind has never blown through. <laughs> I'm so sorry guys, this was my impression of a Dutch accent. I mean, I have to endure people doing a, a wrong, a fake Polish accent so many years, so I wanted to like have my revenge, you know? Hurt people hurt people. You see, this guy is being mean. Am I the only one who has a feeling that all of these critics have a secret crush on Rob? Dude, this looks like plain old nagging situation, something a character of an enemies to lovers fanfic would say. Like, I don't like him, okay? Look at him, he's too perfect to chisel out, as if an ancient sculpture came to life. These Dutch haters just don't realize how tsundere they are being. Look, I need to make a confession. 
I would also have a reason to be biased against Rob. He reminds me of a Dutch guy I met on Bumble last year and things didn't quite work out. By the way, I think I made a mistake of commenting this on one of the TikToks and some thirsty girls started demanding the guy's handle. Um, what can I say? I don't blame you. It's the last thing on my mind to judge anyone for wanting a piece of this fine ass. But that being said, after my dead fucking body. Okay, criticism and denial aside, Rob actually comes across as a decent guy. Keep in mind though, I know absolutely nothing about Dutch politics, so if you would like to correct me on anything, please feel free to do so in the comment section. I just saw a bunch of TikToks and this one clip of Rob winking that left me cold and shamed, lying naked on the floor and uh, hyperventilating. At least Rob doesn't seem to have any history of racism or homophobia. Homophobia. He is actually openly gay himself. And this is also probably what stimulated the eternally horny hive mind of TikTok. Okay, but if the ship had only one half, it would sink in no time. Enter. Jesse Clava. Hi. Lovely to meet you. Another dashing youngling of the Dutch parliament, the leader of Grünlings, the Green Left, curly-haired, doe-eyed Taurus. He has the rugged charm of an unassuming romantic lead that claws his way out of the friend zone by feeding you grilled cheese sandwiches and laughing at your fart jokes. He will support your career choices, call you out on your bullshit and talk your parents out of falling for an email scam. You will share an awkward but endearing kiss after you realize he was always there for you. I'm sorry, the pandemic is getting to me. I don't believe I have to convince you that Jesse is the perfect counterpart to the quick-witted and career-driven Rob, the Edward to his Bella, the Nick Miller to his Jessica Day. Their names even have the same rhythmic quality. Oh, yes, they seem to communicate almost telepathically, with the visible longing in their eyes, the way they dance around each other, pushing and pulling like magnets. I want you, but this would be a mistake. Damn you, oh, Jetton, you're gonna hurt me. Your expensive tortoise shell glasses tell me you're nothing but trouble. Call me by your name, and I will call you by mine. No other politicus has ever made his way to my heart like you. This love is like the Dutch language. I want to learn more, but I am also terrified for my life. Okay, let's get a change of underwear and continue. So the people of TikTok reacted hysterically. No idea who they are, but the tension. Shipping politicians, this is what lockdown did to us. They definitely did it in the restroom. I just found out these people existed a minute ago and god, I'm so invested, it's not funny. I don't know who they are, but they are dating in secret and like pretend to be enemies in front of everyone. Needless to say, the story of the two mysterious politicians spread like wildfire and was swiftly exported to Wattpad, the place where it belonged from the moment of its birth on TikTok. The user with the handle XOXO, Dutch girl, has done the heroic deed of crafting the first official fanfic inspired by the dreamy duo. She called it my colleague. The story is what Shrek once was to the internet, love and life. Here is an excerpt of this masterpiece. As I grab the tomatoes from the fridge to whip up some spaghetti, my phone rings. I'm a bit thrown off by it since I'm not really expecting anyone to call. The number is blocked. Of course. I lay the phone back down on the counter, I'm not one to pick up random blocked numbers. But what if? I pick up the phone anyways. Hello? Nothing. Who is this? I ask. What are you doing to me? I don't recognize the voice immediately, it is deep and rough as if coming from someone who has just smoked an entire pack of cigarettes. What do you mean? Who is this? I'm getting a bit anxious, I have no idea who would be calling me, and I have no idea what this person is talking about. The person on the other end of the line lets out a small chuckle. <laughs> you know who it is, Rob. Then it hits me. Jesse? The call ends. So, shout out to XOXO Dutch girl and her family. You're an angel, truly. I will put the link to the story in the description so all of you can enjoy it during some me time. 
All of this pining and steaminess had me thinking, is this TikTok phenomenon a cultural milestone of some sorts? The answer is yes and no. Jein, as the Germans like to say. No, because we all know it's nothing new to create OTPs of celebrities and public figures, like we do with fictional characters. We ship actors, musicians and those in between. Look what happens with every single boys or girls band on this earth. Each time there is a group with more than three members, you can be sure there already exists a system of love permutations and not one option is left unconsidered. But the thing is, One Direction was designed to set teen hearts a flutter and BTS was bred in a secret bunker specifically to play mix and match with all of its members. Casual queerbaiting achieved by vaguely homoerotic onstage displays of affection and strategic interview statements are their bread and butter. And just as a side note, I do believe there is something to be said about the passion with which the LGBTQ pairings are created. I have a feeling this phenomenon could be ascribed to the systemic marginalization of queer people, but the topic is too important and complex for me to cover in a 10 minute video, so I will leave it to those more well versed in these matters. Okay, but why is res? Why is just a clava and whoop chatten? Why are they? Why? These two Dutch politicians are just minding their own business, in their own country. They are real humans doing their boring jobs and their existence doesn't rely on selling merch and stadium tours. Nay, Jesse Claver has a wife and three kids, as the TikTok detectives have already established. So as a society, have we really been that damaged by the pandemic? Yes, I would say so. But this is not necessarily damage as much as positive disintegration. We have seen Madonna bathing in rose petals among golden faucets talking about the great equalizer of coronavirus. We have witnessed a gang of excruciatingly delusional celebrities singing Imagine in 50 different keys. So famous people have kind of fallen from their pedestals. So it is really no wonder that we have collectively said no more fake smiles, be gone the thoughts and prayers tweets. We want authenticity. And what could be more authentic than two Dutch politicians who have no clue why suddenly the whole world puts them together to encourage a love union? This is disarmingly cute and wholesome. I love TikTok. Ja, ik kreeg de afgelopen dagen opeens super veel DM's met de vraag: heb je al gezien dat je samen met Jesse training bent op TikTok? Dat ik uh, wat is er gebeurd en wat, eigenlijk wat is er bijzonder aan dit filmpje? Samen in bed hebben we al die filmpjes zitten bekijken en die vond het echt hilarisch. Maar ook echt ja, ja, onwijs gelachen. Nou, die van mij heeft me vooral heel hard uitgelachen. Uh, en uh, die stuurt me ook de meest hysterische TikTok filmpjes door. Dus die zit nu allemaal aan het ontdekken en die geeft mij dan de samenvatting. Dank voor alle creativiteit, uh, maar we beloven jullie, het is echt alleen maar fictie.